Hey everybody, so before I get started, this is a tool I want to show you that's developed by uh, CTC and uh, I'm not sponsored by them in any way. This was a new button that they added to their BIM project suite of tools and I thought it was really cool and helpful so I just wanted to mention it and um, I also want to show a different option at the end for folks that don't have uh, have this tool and um, there's also various other things that you could do as well to kind of do something similar so what I want to show is this model health dashboard and you could use something like Dynamo to achieve this or uh, imagine it clarity has a really cool uh, functionality where you can report data out of models and so something I like about this tool in particular is that it's embedded in Revit and it's kind of you know you kind of set it and you forget it you don't have to maintain it in in any way really there's a few things I want to highlight if you do have this tool and if you're building your own I kind of want to highlight this as important uh, pieces and we'll circle back on that and what I mean but um, but uh, just real quick I want to show you the dashboard where it's at so the CTC tool is um, it's going to be a part of the CTC BIM project suite. They have a di they have different suites like the BIM management suite and the BIM project suite is what a lot of firms have. And so they added a button in there called the model dashboard. And if you click this, it will download a family from 2020 and load it into your project. And that family is a title block and it looks like this. And what I like about this is that you can load it in, right, and then just forget it, or not forget it, that's hopefully not the case when we load it, but you don't have to like maintain a separate Dynamo script and make sure it functions and stuff. And that brings me to one of my points, or, or something I think is important to, to call out. I've never like built something like this, I don't, a big reason for that is because I don't think it's valuable when you have to encourage everybody to run a Dynamo script to populate a bunch of um, uh, gauges. I just don't, my experience is I don't see a lot of engagement from people. They don't run them. They also take a little bit more maintenance uh, to make them more specific to the actual needs of, of the people uh, designing in Revit. And these dashboards and what's important uh, with them is that the information that you're showing to your designers needs to be like specific. It needs to have the context of the project in mind. And so you need to adjust the gauges based off of what the, uh, so if you have a client market that you work with. So if you work with a, uh, like a lot of schools and there's a certain uh, certain range of things you need to check for then you adjust the dashboard to uh, to that specific need and then for your health projects you adjust it depending on the needs there and so when the data is showed it's meaningful to to the folks uh, looking at it and Something about these dashboards is, I don't know, there's just so many dashboards out there now. Everybody's building something in Power BI or it's this or another tool. And I am I really want to step back and identify what's important to the folks that are in there designing. And so what's cool about this dashboard, and really any, is that you can modify them. So we can go in here and remove, say, uh, rooms if I'm working in an MB model maybe I don't care about rooms uh, and I can actually replace this with spaces I'm not going to show this piece because it's well documented on their site but you can go in here and remove certain gauges and add different ones they have a whole bunch of different checks this is kind of their default one the neat thing is is after you modify this you can save it into a library uh, you can have multiple versions of it uh, for your different 
uh, like sectors and then pull them in whenever you need it. Pull in the right one and it's going to work. So you don't need to use this one every single time or just one. You can customize in you know different ones for different needs. And so the idea behind that is when I look at a gauge and it's in red, if it's general like just settings in there, then it's not really gonna be meaningful to me. So I wanna adjust it based off of what the um, project type is so that the information is meaningful. Something else that I think is valuable here, even if the information isn't like super valuable for the designer, is that it does bring the conversation of data to the forefront and it really uh, highlights it for everybody involved instead of just a BIM person behind the scenes like fixing stuff and trying to explain to designers, hey, this is why we don't import 400 CAD files uh, because it affects our open times, our sync times, and, and, and uh, just all sorts of different things. And so um, I think that piece is sometimes undervalued. It's just like, let's have better conversations, like everybody, not just somebody with a BIM title, um, but everybody have better conversations around data and what it means. And so this could be a stepping stone in getting to a point where you're pulling more data, maybe into a database, and then reflecting that data uh, through a Power BI dashboard that everybody has access. It doesn't have to be Power BI, but something uh, like that, and maybe that also integrates into Revit somehow. So I think this is a great way to start those conversations. It's a very low barrier tool. You load it in, and it's good to go. So as an example, uh, this one's already populated, but if I actually go find this, so this is the family right here. It's just a sheet. It's called the CTC MD dashboard. So now if I just search for that, we'll find it. I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. Okay, so now it doesn't exist. Now what we'll do is we'll load a brand new one into our project. It's going to load it. It's going to be from 2020. Uh, that's the latest version they have. So for everything 2020 and forward, you can use this tool. So now that's loaded. So I'm going to go find it. We can see it right here. We can drag it onto our, um, our sheet here. And then uh, you can see none of the dials are populated. The ranges are down here below, by the way. And I actually have a custom dashboard where I removed all those, that information at least. And then I uh, adjusted the types of dials that are in there. Um, you can also adjust the way that they're calculated. It just goes back to like, let's really make this meaningful. Just because it's a dashboard doesn't mean it's gonna be automatically helpful. It does take, I think, some uh, like thoughtfulness in what is our goal what is the project types? What are the things we should be watching for? And then making sure everybody sees this when they open up a project. So you could even make this your start view. So if you go to your, um, I always forget where this is because I never have to change it, but it's either here or it's in our manage, in our manage tab. So yeah, so our start view, we can set the uh, sheet as our start view. And so anytime this is opened, uh, somebody will see this uh, right off the bat. And then something I think is important to do is just turn off appears and checklist and then rename it to something that's a bit clearer on what it is. So in this case, I renamed it to just model health dashboard. Now what's neat about this, and this is an essential model, it works the same if it's cloud or if it's locally, um, um, a local uh, collaboration model. And so if I save this, it'll take a second, it's gonna save, and then we'll see the uh, dials get updated. And actually what's interesting is it's looking for that action. So I've, I've had it sometimes where I don't save, like it, I go to save and then it errors out, doesn't actually save, but it still updates the dials. So takes a minute and then you can see it gets updated. So 
the idea that I try to promote is like, okay, if you're going to use this on your projects, let's adjust the dials to something that makes sense. So if there's certain BEP like standards, so if you need to have certain amount of work sets or uh, line styles, let's adjust those uh, to be more specific to your actual project needs so that when these are in red, it's going to alert you to do some sort of action, right? Um, and again, this really promotes this whole data centric mindset where now we're looking at the data. We're also seeing more of the behind the scenes stuff that maybe a BIM lead would be handling and really just bringing it, uh, I think really highlighting that this is something like the way we manage Revit models kind of involves everybody. It isn't just one person following everybody from behind, you know, cleaning up everything they drop. It's let's collectively do this so that then we can have even more conversations around data and what's important for us to watch for what's important for us to automate um and so on you know what's going to help downstream there's just so many aspects to it um so anyways that's really all there is to this so you can actually take this family save it out to a folder so we could right click it and save it to a folder modify it uh, for each of our uh, project types and then have them there for any teams that need to load them in. You can have them already in your projects. So if you have any templates, you can, ha you can have the family already in there and set up so that when they set up their project, it's already ready to go. Uh, and then it just works by itself. You know, it's just there. It just It takes engagement from people. They have to look at the data. Um, it doesn't have all the data but that's where I'm like, this is a stepping stone to just better conversations around information. Uh, we can build on this over time. If it's, uh, you know, it could be this tool or it could be another tool. So before I end this, I wanted to mention one other thing uh, in case you don't have this tool. PyRevit is an open source tool and you can get it if you've never messed with it before. And they've got these things called pre-flight checks. And if we just do the uh, model checker, run that, we'll see the output here. And this is something that could be similar. I'm not sure what this error is. I just installed this for 2024. This is the, um, I think the, yeah, the 4.8 version of PyRevit. So it's the latest uh, version right now. And so this is a cool way to see the data if you haven't used this already. Um, if you don't have you know, this tool or you don't have anything that you could tie into another uh, data visualization tool, this is available, can be used, um, and then you can see what's going on in your project. And what's neat about PyRevit, which I haven't um, explored this yet, but I plan on doing it, is looking at this the code that uh, for this function right here so for this button and seeing if I can modify it for more specific things that are important to me uh, and even maybe report that data in a separate database uh, so that we can pull that information or like PMs could use it that don't have to be tied into Revit they don't have to open up Revit not that I don't think they shouldn't but in some cases like maybe there's leaders that want to get a, a bigger picture you could tie the data into a, a database um, but in here you could have something that uh, designers and other folks that are opening up Revit can quickly um, you know get some information that's important to them and so um, anyways I just thought this was really cool this is just another option of, of doing that if you don't have it you could build something in Dynamo there's Imagine Clarity there's so many tools out there that allow you to reflect you know like pull data into them the tools are available now it's just I just think it's important to be thoughtful and what you're like really understand what your goal is what do we want to get out of this data do we, we want to store it for uh, long-term reasons? Maybe we want to get into prediction modeling in the in the future or predictive modeling. Uh, you know, do we want to elevate the conversations our designers are having around data and the impacts it has on our models? Uh, you know, and these conversations don't have to stick to just Revit. It's anything that we're creating. If we're creating a lot of information in Word documents, having conversations about better data management, I think is important. 
and how we just work in the BIM ecosystem. So anyways, I just wanted to show this. I thought it was cool. I love it. It's a really, uh, for me, I manage so many different projects that I just can't go into all of them every day. And this is a, w a cool way for all the team members to be proactive and, under and also understand uh, what they're doing may impact uh, everybody on a project and not just themselves. So hopefully you got, you got something out of this. Let me know if you're tracking data and using data. And yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.